fun yeah boy this is just a great night for me I think I know half the people in this room and I love half the people in this room <laughs> not the same half mind you Should probably clear that up but I kicked things off with a show-stopping number for two reasons one because I wanted to impress all of you hopefully that's going well but two, there's nothing like music to bring a crowd together. You know, everybody loves music. My dad is all about his classical composers. My mom loves her 50s rock and roll. My kid sister, for some reason, is still a fan of Britney Spears. <laughs> and yes, we have scheduled an intervention. <laughs> but I've noticed something about popular music. A lot of it is really stupid. <laughs> These lyrics, if you start paying attention, it's like they never thought we were going to pay attention. Oh, I have examples. <laughs> I need a hero till the end of the night. And he's gotta be strong, and he's gotta be fast, and he's gotta be fresh from the fight. Let's take a quick look at that list, shall we? <laughs> strong? Sure, women want a strong man. Who wouldn't? Fast, though? I'll give you 
give you a second. <laughs> Ask any woman the top ten things she wants in a man, she is not going to say fast. You can take my word for it. But that third one, fresh from a fight, there is no way that Bonnie Tyler thought about that when she wrote it down. Oh, Jackie, I just met the greatest guy. Yeah, he was all covered in blood and sweat. You know what that does to me? <laughs> Stupid song lyrics. Fly around the world, don't speak the language. All you need to understand is, is talk dirty to me. Yeah, talk dirty to me in your language. <laughs> that I just admitted I don't understand. I see no flaws in that plan at all. It's your kunino tamitoka. Yeah, girl. <laughs> doki doki to you too. <laughs> All around the world, statues crumble for me. I'm not allowed in museums. <laughs> Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you. Okay, I'll buy that a mountain can be too tall. I will buy that a river could be too wide. What's the big deal with a valley being low? Why is that a huge obstacle? I don't know, boys. That valley looks pretty low. Don't think we'll be getting to you today. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is my Brad Pitt impression. <laughs> it's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. Amen. Listen, I know dating is hard. <laughs> Having been in a relatively minor hailstorm, I don't think 200 pound bodies falling from the sky is something to celebrate. And sometimes you just know the lyricist was on something. The dream police, they live inside of my head. The dream police. I mean, it takes a lot of medication to write something as beautiful as the dream police are living inside my head. <laughs> Pull it over, dream police. <laughs> Sir? Are you aware you were playing hacky sack with Lionel Richie in a bear? In a no playing hacky sack with Lionel Richie in a bear zone? I'm gonna need to see your dream license. I'm getting so excited. My heart goes beep, 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 beep. I'm not a doctor, but... I feel safe in saying, if your heart is beeping, you need immediate medical attention. But careful who you go see. I had an issue recently, and uh, I asked my family doctor just what I had. And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what? You're my family doctor. 75 bucks for that? So forget him, I went to see somebody else. This was a foreign fellow. All I could get out of him was ooh, ee, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. And honestly, for all I know, he was talking dirty to me. But the third doctor cleared it, no problem. He said, put the lime and the coconut, drink them both up. And I've been good ever since. Uh, that joke is stupid, you're funny. Love songs are a great place to find stupid lyrics. <laughs> a lonely night, but he knows where she's going. She's heading for the cheating side of town. Which is Aurora, right? <laughs> On the other side of town, a boy is waiting. With starry eyes and dreams no one can steal. So... They'll even steal your dreams in a row. <laughs> and that's why we need dream police. 
it's all coming together now. <laughs> when I'm sad, you're a clown. Uh, and if I come home and my wife is depressed, I go right for the rainbow wig and floppy shoes. <laughs> And when I'm scared, you're always around. Oh, when I'm scared, you're always around. <laughs> Come to think of it, when I'm scared, you're always around. Maybe this is not a healthy relationship. As an added bonus, you will never hear any of these songs the same way ever again. It's my gift to you. Home, where my thoughts are escaping. Home, where my music's playing. Home, where my love lies waiting silently for me. Uh, what a picture. His love's there waiting silently. Yeah, I call BS on that. I'm married. There is no silence. <laughs> sweet, sweet silence. <laughs> My wife is in the second row, and uh, let's move on. I grew up with uh, 80s television shows. And there ain't no nothing we can't love each other through. There ain't no nothing we can't love each other through. Take out the double negatives. There is apparently something they can't love each other through. My guess would be the show's cancellation. Charles in charge of my days and my nights. Charles in charge of my wrongs and my rights. That is a lot of power to give one person who willingly goes by the name Chachi. <laughs> this one's for the, uh, the mothers in the audience. Everywhere you look, there's the face of somebody who needs you. That's, that's motherhood in a nutshell, right? Every time I turn around, somebody else needs something. <laughs> this is the audience participation part. I'll cue you when it's your turn. When a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood, I got in one little fight. My mom got scared. She said, <laughs> Yes, she did. Give yourselves a round of applause. I don't have a joke for that. I just wanted to see if I could make you do my bidding. And you were excellent. So thank you for that. Uh, sometimes digging deeper, there are noises that are never explained. Like the cell phone that just went off. <laughs> I have no explanation for it because we asked people to turn their cell phones off like an hour and a half ago. But anyway, no, I still love you. Noises that are not explained. Rhythm is gonna get you. Rhythm is gonna get you. Rhythm is gonna get you. Aroo! <laughs> is that guy okay? I will say, it takes one heck of a musician to be able to have that kind of gastrointestinal problem and still stay on tempo. Yeah. Was it the phone? Do you want me to tell it again? No, I'll move on. But my, my primary pop performer pet peeve are bands that don't know when to stop. Why are the Rolling Stones still touring? Hobbling on stage with their walkers. Backstage freebasing, I don't know, Metamucil. Groupies showing off pictures of the grandkids. This is Stephanie. I'll never be a societal burden. Wow, nothing? Really? So the Rolling Stones sing songs. Anyway, well, ha, the sounds of silence. It gets worse. I was in Oregon recently and saw a billboard advertising the Turtles live in concert. The Turtles. I can't see me paying no 65 bucks to see that line. 
So this brings us to Madonna. Uh, brace yourselves. She was pretty hot stuff in the 80s. She was vaguely relevant in the 90s. Now, I'm sorry, she's just kind of sad. And the worst thing is she doesn't seem to know that she's sad. Last year, a friend of mine said, hey, did you hear Madonna went topless? And I said, well, you know, weird things happened in the 80s. He said, no, no, this was last week. If you haven't heard, I'm not making this up. In 2014, 57 year old Madonna went woohoo to a British tabloid. Now, I don't want to be ageist. Women, whatever age you are, you are beautiful. Having said that, <laughs> I feel there comes a time when it's no longer acceptable for a woman to go woohoo to a British tabloid and 57 might be slightly past the uh, sell-by date. <laughs> so, in honor of Miss Madonna Louise Ciccone Penn Ritchie, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I have, uh, I have written a Beatles parody song. Well, the Beatles wrote the song, I just changed the words. And I'll go back to the piano and play it for you right now. And for those of you in the audience who are Beatles fans, I'm going to play exactly the song that you would expect. <laughs> Aging Madonna, are you quite aware? Lady Gaga's taking your market share. Who buys the albums released so long ago? Have you thought of checking that old cash flow? Your latest movie role was quite a sleeper. You held a concert, then you didn't come. Losing all your fans to Justin Bieber. See how they run. Aging Madonna, dating once again. Have you ever thought of just being friends? Makes you sound dumb. In the 80s, you were bold and brassy. Now you're a bum. Too much? <laughs> well, she's not here. Aging Madonna, please don't show your breasts. Give those sagging, flabby old things a rest. of not getting sued, let's move on. You seem like a very kind crowd, uh, and uh, so I'm going to tell you something very, very personal to me. I am a huge nerd. And unlike the engineering nerds who build this world, or the computer nerds who make it go, I'm the kind of nerd that has no value whatsoever. <laughs> For I am a comic book nerd. And we are useless. We are one short step above the world of Warcraft overlord living in his mama's basement. And several steps below Trekkie. But I can clear up 80 years of public debate and tell you that the best ever superhero is Batman. I'm glad to hear that you all agree. And I can prove it for any doubters in the audience because Batman could really happen. Yes, your parents would have to be murdered in front of your eyes, leaving you a passionate, driven, extremely athletic billionaire. But that could happen. You want to be Superman? You and me both, but we'd have to be born on another planet, just for starters. 
You want to be Spider-Man? All right, well, just get bitten by a radioactive spider, which is a lot more difficult now that they've closed down the radioactive spider of the month club. <laughs> you want to be Aquaman? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just say that because uh, it amuses me. <laughs> of course you don't. Do um, you want to be the Flash? A little super speed? Sure, just arrange to be struck by lightning while bathed in various chemicals. <laughs> when I think of all the rainy afternoons I spent as a child running around outdoors bathed in various chemicals. <laughs> and you know, never, not once was I struck by lightning. Could not catch a break. <laughs> I wanted to be a superhero so badly, I would have settled for being Wonder Woman. But there was some kind of chromosome issue. I couldn't pull that off. And then Bruce Jenner beat me to it. Oh, cheap shot. You're right. But Batman could really happen. And as a kid, I ran around all the time pretending that I was Batman. I'd run around all the time pretending I was Batman now, if my wife would let me. <laughs> But as a kid, I had the toy Batman cape. And this is so stupid. There was a tag in the cape that said, cape does not enable wearer to fly. <laughs> Which is so ridiculous, right? Of course you can't fly using the toy Batman cape. Batman doesn't fly. If you want to fly, you need the toy Superman cape, I guess. <laughs> My mother would not get that for me. But Batman has one thing that Superman does not, and that's the coolest belt in the history of, well, ever. The utility belt. Batman can get in any kind of trouble and pull whatever he needs from this special belt. <laughs> Batman, we're trapped! Oh, if only you had a flashlight, a gas mask, and some thermite. Here. <laughs> Batman, we're trapped! Oh, if only you had a hot dog, a hubcap, and a lava lamp. Here. <laughs> Batman, we're trapped! Oh, if only you had an original cast recording of Brigadoon. <laughs> Cassette or CD? <laughs> Good comedy comes in threes, but I wrote this one about 30 minutes ago. Batman, we're trapped! Oh, if only you had a beret, an eye patch, and an accordion. <laughs> No one in the history of the world has ever had those three things at the same time. As I think about it, I want to get a utility belt. Sure, I'll look like a dork, but I wear a Batman t-shirt literally half the time anyway. So I might as well accessorize. And just think, a pocket for my phone, a pocket for my inhaler. Oh, I don't have asthma, but you never know. Pocket for my library card. Zzz. Oh, yes, I have, this is true, I have library cards in three separate counties. Yeah, I don't know how I got married either. But best of all, everywhere you go, you could carry around smoke bombs. Think how much fun that would be. You're at a party, you say something stupid, Unintentionally a little racist. Ah, you know, I didn't. I'm sorry. Ha ha! Psh! Vanish. Yeah. And then there's the bat signal. I would have loved to have been around for that conversation. You have Commissioner Gordon. Uh, was it Batman? Batman, you've, you've saved this city. We would have been lost without you. Uh, this is embarrassing. Is there a number we could call if we ever need you again? Sure. Or, go with me on this. What if we got a spotlight? Put it on the roof. Huh? Some black construction paper? The bat signal. The coolest and also dumbest form of communication. Why don't you just get two tin cans and a string while you're at it? And think about it, what if there's an emergency at two o'clock in the afternoon? I mean, come on, Bats, even my utility belt has a phone in it. But the moment I'm waiting for, someday I'm gonna see it in the comics, is the day when Batman turns around 
and Commissioner Gordon has vanished. Aha, see how it feels! <laughs> I wasn't sure you guys would get that one, but you're fine. <laughs> Moving on, we have Wonder Woman. Empowering young girls everywhere that they too can fight crime in their bathing suits. Because <laughs> nothing says vigilante justice like picking wedgies. <laughs> For transportation, Wonder Woman has a futuristic high-tech jet plane which the Amazons were, of course, known for. <laughs> Any fellow nerds out there know the color of the futuristic high-tech jet plane? Invisible. That's correct. It's invisible. Because comic book artists are that lazy. <laughs> Pick up any Wonder Woman comic. I guarantee two, three pages, completely blank. Now, if I was Superman... Oh. Sorry. Um... <laughs> If I was Superman, I would use my super speed and super strength to move the invisible plane about 20 feet when Wonder Woman was busy, you know, blocking bullets. Just for the look on her face when we're all done fighting crime and she goes to nonchalantly lean up again. <laughs> Superman, I've warned you about this. Now, if Batman is the best ever superhero, and I think we've established that he is, arguably the most popular superhero ever is Superman. And I can prove that too. What is the only t-shirt, excuse me, the only superhero t-shirt a high school jock can get away with wearing? Superman. You have never seen a high school jock wearing an Aquaman t-shirt. Not even, ironically, the swim team. And we all know the story. While he was still a baby, little Superman was shot into space by his drunken father. Oh yeah, Jor-El made up this story about how Krypton was going to explode, but the truth is he was wasted. The rocket lands in Kansas, is found by Jonathan and Martha Kent, and they adopt little Clark as their own son. And what a treat it must be having a toddler with superpowers. Clark, put Mr. Johnson's tractor down this instant. Don't put it down on, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> yes, son, you can fly to the moon later. Right now, I need you to eat your peas. I need to stand for this one. We do not use heat ray vision on the cat. <laughs> I think, though, we should all be very thankful that the rocket landed safely in Kansas, and then 20 years later we have the corn-fed, Midwest values Superman we know and love. Because the rocket could have come down anywhere. It could have landed in the Bronx, and then we'd have, I don't know, Jewish Superman. <laughs> Oi, Lex Luthor, you putz. You gotta take over the world right now, I'm having a bagel here. <laughs> rocket could have landed in the Hamptons. We'd have smarmy Superman. <laughs> Lex Luthor, darling. If you insist on taking over the world, you must diversify your portfolio. <laughs> My wife hates that accent. She's in the second row, second row right now going... Rocket could have landed in Ireland. Oh, is that Lex Luthor then? You fancy a pint, mate? I am not saying all Irish people are criminals that he'd have a drink with Lex Luthor. I'm saying all Irish people are drunks. <laughs> That's different. Rocket could have come down in France. We'd have a Superman who surrenders to everybody, wouldn't we? <laughs> uh, if you listen carefully, you can hear all the French people. It was 75 years ago! <laughs> Let it go already! Suit the Lord. The rocket could have come down right here in Denver, couldn't it? Yeah, and you know what we'd have then? Stone Superman. Excuse me, Mile High Superman. Can you imagine a Superman just, you know, strung out on marijuana? I feel like I'm flying. Oh, that's right. Oh, Superman hungry. Where's that Doritos factory? 
This, though, gives me chills. I realized this recently. We all know that three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered in what? Water. Water. Odds are very good that that rocket lands in the ocean. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> and then 20 years later, Superman would be Aquaman. I lose sleep at night thinking about that. <laughs> you all are a lot of fun. I hope you know how much fun you are. So because you've been so much fun, I'm going to play one more song on the piano. And if you've been paying attention, you might well expect I have a Beatles parody for you, but you'd be wrong. I have three. <laughs> a superhero medley, if you will. Peter Parker's Spider-Man Living in his Spider-Land Making all his Spider-Plans For spider buddy. <laughs> I admit, that needs work. His secret identity Only known to you and me Spider-Sense, can you see me at all? Spider-Man, have pity, they're attacking the city. Green Goblin has taken Aunt May and Mary Jane. Saving lives across the land, does what all a spider can. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Says I can't live in the basement no more I really need a job And I want to be a comic book writer Comic book writer Got a superhero and his name is Jim He wears a cape and mask, no one knows it's him He's got x-ray vision and can maybe fly I've never kissed a girl But I want to be a comic book writer Comic book writer Lois Lane has gotten kidnapped once again. Jimmy Olsen's watch is signaling, I'll bet it's Brainiac. Now Lois Lane is a reporter for a newspaper. She's always looking for the scoop of her career. But Lois never ever feels no fear, Superman is near. Lexi Luther is a businessman with lots of power. The little children laugh at him because he's bald. So Luther has all of those children scalded dead in his basement lair. So unfair. Lois Lane can't tell Clark Kent to Superman. Yet I still remain a big ass fan. Lois Lane. That is unfortunately going to do it for the piano, but we're not quite done with the evening because I have one more subject to talk to you about, one of my favorites, and that is Broadway. Now, I told you earlier in the evening about my Disney GPS device, and we all know the fate that that suffered. Well, I still get lost, and I got the opportunity a few months back to do a gig up in Greeley. I will admit, I've lived in Denver my entire life, I have no idea where Greeley actually is. It's like Narnia. If Narnia smelled funny. So I figured I would get a GPS system to get me to Greeley, and I hadn't learned my lesson with the Disney one, so I bought the Broadway brand GPS device. I know. And I waited until I was already running late to plug the darn thing in. The first setting on the Broadway GPS device was West Side Story. 
I like to drive in America, I-25 in America, they go so fast in America, drive up your truck in America. <laughs> Clever, but not especially helpful. So I tried again. Ho, oh, Officer Krupke is right on your tail. He'll give you off that ticket and then haul you to jail. Also not helpful, but amazingly accurate. How did the GPS know there was a cop behind me? So I'll give it one more try. Make a left ahead. Thank goodness, actual information. Somewhere a left ahead. You'll merge onto the interstate. Make a left somewhere. So I'd had all about I could stand of West Side Story. I switched, and the next setting was Oklahoma. I'm not driving in Oklahoma, but what have I got to lose? Colorado, where the drivers are all quite insane. They'll pass on the right, they'll get in a fight as they merge on over in your lane. It wasn't wrong. Enough of Oklahoma. What? Okay, Rent is the next setting. And they had to navigate New York City in Rent. Surely they could get me to Greeley. Turn left in 525,600 meters. Never mind. Last setting on the Broadway GPS device is the sound of music. I know, at this point, what am I going to get? The sound of music. Nazis? Nuns, little idiot children singing about brown paper packages. <laughs> Good morning and to your destination, lay o lay o lay hee hoo. It's Maria. Traffic is heavy, you must be patient, lay o lay o loo. Oh, Maria, please, please get me to Greeley. I, I'm driving, I shouldn't close my eyes. <laughs> Make a left, three blocks ahead, merge onto I-25. You'll go north for 40 miles, that's a long, long way to drive. You did not turn where I said, recalculating your route. Make a U-turn up ahead, that will bring you back to start. <laughs> Please make the U-turn carefully. <laughs> so that worked out okay. Now, as you may have guessed by this point, I really do love Broadway musicals. And one of my absolute favorites is The Phantom of the Opera. I know. <laughs> and I heard in a radio interview, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber was on NPR a couple years back, and he was talking about how he was writing a sequel to The Phantom, which for my money is a horrible idea because it's perfect as it is. We don't need more. See Pirates of the Caribbean if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but setting that aside, the moment I heard sequel to The Phantom of the Opera, my brain said, huh, if I was going to write a sequel to The Phantom of the Opera, what would The Phantom do for a living? And my brain immediately replied to itself, well, silly, he would be a Walmart greeter. <laughs> This is the kind of thing I have to live with every day. <laughs> but while crazy, the idea was still intriguing. And because I have way too much free time, I've started to write a sequel to The Phantom of the Opera. And I'm going to share a little bit of it with you now, if nobody minds. That's good, because I'm going to do it anyway. But I even have a bit of a prop for you. Because I will go to any length to entertain you. So, uh, my take on The Phantom of the Opera 2, Behind the Blue Apron. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart, may I help you find something? We're so glad you're shopping here today. 
Shoes are over there, we've got ribbons for your hair. My name's Eric, tell me what you're looking for. And welcome to our giant Walmart store. <laughs> Down that aisle, we have soap and lotion and hand cream. Don't forget, we now offer layaway. All our t-shirts are 30% off. If you buy four, we'll give you one free. It's kind of magical, isn't it? <laughs> No, that cannot be returned. The item's damaged. The box is open. You have no receipt. <laughs> now, in the one that I'm writing, the Phantom has a bit of a character arc because he's working at Walmart. A man with a horrible facial disfigurement, a mask and a cloak runs around singing to himself. That's about average for Walmart. So with his newfound sense of self-worth, Eric eventually moves into the sales staff. Order now for Christmas. No payments until May. I'm here, happy to guide you. Low price is there beside you. Have you seen our sportswear? New shipment in today. You'll look ever so charming while jogging or while farming. <laughs> and say you'll shop here with us now and always. Swipe your member's club card every day And say you'll never go to Kohl's or Target Anything you wish for may come true Shop here, that's all we ask of you You guys really are the best. Now, I ran into a, another Broadway musical I really love is The Music Man. I'm a big fan, especially of Professor Harold Hill. And I ran across Professor Hill in a surprising way recently. Now, before there was internet on the, our phones, you know, back in the dark ages, <laughs> if you wanted a movie showtime in a hurry, who did you call? Movie phone. Movie phone, yes, indeed. And when you called Movie Phone, you would hear, Hello and welcome to AOL Movie Phone. If you know the name of the movie you'd like to see, press one now. Well, so for nostalgia's sake, a couple weeks ago I tried that, and the Movie Phone guy has retired. I know. They wouldn't tell me where he has gone. I'd like to think he's leaning across a bar in the Bahamas right now. If you know the name of the hot chick in the corner, press one now. <laughs> But I learned that uh, he had moved on when I dialed 303-777-FILM, and I heard, Congratulations on making an excellent choice for your entertainment value. What better way to spend a comfortable afternoon than sitting in our quiet, air-conditioned theater, watching the very best that Hollywood has to offer? Why, the movies coming out of Tinseltown today have never been so chock-full of car chases or explosions than they are right now. This is AOL Movie Phone, and boy, have we got... Movies, oh, we got movies right here in Colorado, right here in Colorado. Angelina Jolie playing Sandra D. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, we got movies, oh, we got movies right here. What else are you going to do with yourself? Your kids are in school. Get your butt down here, see our movies, movies, movies. If you're still willing to pay more than $10 for a small cup of popcorn, movies, movies, movies. If you still get excited when you hear the word sequel, Movies, movies, movies. If you still hold out hope that Nicolas Cage can revive a failed career. Movies, movies, movies. 
Then once again, let me welcome you to AOL Movie Phone. Oh, we got movies. And it went on from there. Harold Hill has taken over for the movie phone guy. And after I entered, this, that song entered, uh, that song ended, and I entered my five-digit zip code, and 76 theaters in your area, and 110 within 20 miles. If you're looking for showtimes, tickets, or just want to watch previews, I guarantee you'll have a smile. We've got giant IMAX screens and also Dolby Sound. Thundering, thundering all across the land. We've got M&Ms and Raisinets and Jujubees. Diet Coke sitting at your right hand. We'll make sure that all the previews last for half an hour. Until you forget what you've arrived to see. Then just sit back and relax, cause after the coming attractions, we'll immerse you in glorious 3D. Honestly, it's the most fun I've ever had on a phone call that I can talk about in a clean show. <laughs> but uh, he still wasn't done. I entered the first three letters of the movie I wanted to see. And Terminators at 3, 5, and 7, and 9.30. Don't forget to buy some popcorn. Silence your phone. So I urge you to call Movie Phone next time you need a showtime. Tell Professor Harold Hill WC sent you. He's just a recording, so it'll be meaningless, but it'll make me feel good. Now, good things come in threes, and to close out our time tonight, I have one more Broadway character to talk to you about. A little girl whom nobody wanted, little redhead, who refused to let life get her down. Now, uh, Annie is not one of my favorite musicals. In fact, I've seen that show probably about 17 more times than I really wanted to. But uh, it's fun to be on stage talking about Annie because there is a stage in this town where a couple years back they were doing a production of Annie and the title character at the end of Hard Knock Life did a knee slide right off the edge of the stage into the orchestra pit. A Hard Knock Life indeed. Uh, let's just say it was a good thing she was an orphan. She was fine. She was a little shorter, but... But I don't want to talk about a real life, Annie. I want to talk about the one in the musical that we know. Most people know, of course, that by the end of the 30s, Annie had become Annie Warbucks. But few people know that by the late 50s, Annie had grown up and become the district attorney for the city of Chicago. Oh, no. I'll give you a second for that premise to sink in. <laughs> And uh, by all reports, Annie was an excellent DA, and she still brought her specific brand of humor and sunshine to the Chicago court system. Yes, I'm going to sing for you now. And you might think that I have a red curly wig to pull out of a pocket somewhere. But uh, last week I was going through a closet and I found some leftover shreds of dignity. So you're just gonna have to use your imaginations. As I present to you Annie Warbucks, Chicago DA. 25 to life for you. 25 to life for you. Instead of kisses, you'll get struck. Instead of loving, you'll get beat up in the cafeteria. 25 to life. That was close. Gonna lock you up, you see. Then we'll throw away the key. Who cares if you're sick or well? Once we slide you in that cell, 25 to life. No one thinks it was not premeditated. No one buys temporarily insane. We all know this is one man that you hated. That's why you put the ice pick in his brain. Ah. And by all accounts, she was an excellent DA. And after a successful conviction, if possible, Annie would sit down 
with the prisoner to encourage them on their way up the river. <laughs> I know, you're just anticipating it, aren't you? <laughs> Betcha they're nice. Betcha they're fun. <laughs> Bet they won't shoot you. We took all their guns. Betcha they serve your favorite soup. I hear you shower as one happy group. <laughs> so maybe you'll get shipped, and maybe you will die. <laughs> Cellmate be calling you baby. Maybe. Yeah, she was not very good at that. But the highlight of Annie's career and the close of tonight's show came during the trial of dangerous Daniel McGowan. And by all accounts, it was Annie's closing argument that put that mobster away for good. And I've gone to great lengths, I've done research, so I can present to you that closing argument in its entirety. And uh, let me step out of being a comic real quick. Comics, they always say, hey, you've been a fantastic audience, so much so that the words lose all meaning. But you really have been absolutely tremendous. This has been one of the best nights of my life. And uh, yeah, you've earned this. Uh, give me one second. One more time to close out this fantastic evening, Annie Warbucks, Chicago DA. They're gonna convict tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow you'll get hung. Just thinking about tomorrow makes me so glad I'm the one to tell you that you're done. This city should be safe from your oppression. So they appointed me to be DA. Oh, they're gonna convict tomorrow. It'll be unanimous tomorrow. Come what may.